all right so we covered pretty much all of our test scenarios now in this final scenario we will go ahead and see how to implement page object model for our test now why page object model is important well it's one of the ways to structure our test suite it helps us to easily author our test and maintain our test so that we don't have to keep repeating our code again and again so let's head over to the playwright site to see how we can implement page object model with playwright all right, so I'm over here on the Playwright website, and as you can see, it says the introduction. It explains kind of what play, page object model is. And then the thing we need to focus on is the implementation. So right here, they essentially what they do is they create a class. Within that class, they add in all of the locators. So these are the locators. So you have your page as well as all the locators. They create a constructor to initialize all of those locators. And then you can add in necessary methods as you see fit to reduce the duplication of your code in your test. So we can implement a similar thing as part of our test as well. Now I won't really go ahead and implement page object for all of our test. I will do it for the first two and then you can go ahead and implement for the rest of the test as well. Now, if you already are familiar with how to do page object model, go ahead and try this out on your own. And then I will show you how to do this as well. All right, so let's head over to VS code and I will show you how to implement page object model for our existing test. So this is our existing test that we have written so far. So I'm going to go ahead and simply create a new folder right here. Call this one pages. So I'm creating at the root. And within that, I'm going to add a new file called home.page.es. Now right here, we're going to go ahead and add in all of our locators for specifically for the first two tests, because this is what I'm going to be covering as part of our page object model. So we have to start off by creating a class. So I'm going to call this class home page. Now within that class, we need to add in all of our page as well as the locator. So my page is simply gonna be page, which we need to import at the top. So I can do import. So we need to import our page. We need to import our locator from playwright test. There you go. So we have our page right here, as you can see. And then we need to also add in all of our other locators. So what locators do we have? Well, the first locator is our logo. So let's add in that. So I'm just going to copy this. And actually, we don't even have to initialize it right now. So I can simply do logo is one of my locator. What other things do we have? So we have, let's say, a search button. We have a search input. And then we have right here the search result title right here. So we're going to add all of that thing. So I'm going to call this one search button. This is, again, a locator. I have a search input, which is also a locator. And then finally, I have a search results title, which is also my locator. Now we can create a constructor to initialize all of these locators as well as page. So we can do that by creating a constructor. Constructor will take in my page as a parameter. Now here I can do this dot page is equal to page. All right, so I'm essentially assigning, whenever we call this home page, we're gonna provide the page context, which is this thing right here. So I'm saying that page should equal to the page that I have in my class right over here. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our logo as well. I'm saying this logo should be equal to page.locator. And then the locator we used, which is right here. And I can paste it right over here. Perfect. We need to do the same thing for search button, search input, and search result title. So let me quickly go ahead and do that. All right, so I went ahead and added all of our other locators as well, which is over here, get by role, get by placeholder, and then page at locator. Perfect. Now this pretty much covers all of our main thing. Now what we need to do is we can go ahead and also add in some of the method. One of the base method that you add is, let's say this is the home page. We can create a go to method. So I can create a go to method right here. And this go to method will go to this home page. So this pretty much is going to be this thing right here. And this will be await this dot page dot go to the Cricket World Cup site. So now we can also go ahead and add in our other methods as well. So for example, over here, we have a perform search, right? We're performing a search right over here. So maybe we can create a method for, to perform the search. 
So this entire thing can be part of performing the search. So we can create that as well. So I can create a method. Call this one perform search. And the perform search will take in some kind of like whatever we're trying to search for right? some kind of term. So this will be string. And then right here, I can add in all of the methods here, which is this particular thing that we were doing. So this whole thing can be added here. Now we can replace all of these things with the existing methods that we already have, right? So the first one is the click. So the click will get replaced with, we already have this thing covered as part of our search button. So I can simply do await this dot search button dot click. So this thing has now been changed to this. Same thing for search input. I can do await this dot search input dot fill and then whatever term we need to fill it with so this whole thing can get removed as well and finally we can change this to this dot search input dot press enter all right so that's my perform search method now the next thing we're going to do is this is kind of a verification of that search result right this is performing the search this is verifying the search result so i can create a method for this as well so I can do a sync verify search results. This will take some string as well because we are verifying the same term. And then I can copy paste the same thing. So here, let's copy this and paste it here. We don't really have an expect right now. So we can go ahead and import an expect at the top. There you go. And then this will change to this dot page URL. It should contain whatever the term is. So let's change that search term and make it dynamic. So I'm going to use the template strings and change this to term. There you go. And then over here as well, we're going to change this entire thing to this dot search results title. It should have text results for and whatever the text is so i'll change this to that term so result for that particular term perfect so this is kind of all the entire page object that we have created for our home page and we can export this so we can reuse it as part of our test all right now let's go ahead and try to implement this in our test so at the very top i'm going to go ahead and import my home page so here I can type in home page and there you go. The moment I do that, it auto imports it for me. Remember, this is should be properly done. Either it should auto import. If it's not, make sure you add the dot dot correctly. In my case, I'm going to level up. One level up is test. Another level up is my pages. So that's where I'm going up. So go to level up, go to pages, then go to home dot page. Then from there, I can simply start using it right here. So we can replace all of this. At the top, I'm going to create a new variable called home page. And then I'm going to initialize my constructor or initialize my class, which takes in a page. All right, so here I created a home page by using new home page, and that takes in a page, which is right here. Now we can change this page.goto to, to simply say await homepage.goto. And then we can add in. Um, this base URL has already been added in into my method, so we don't really need to say which URL it needs to go to. We can also say this piece right here, either we can create a new method for it because we are pretty much duplicating it over here as well, right? We are doing page.url.toContain and page.url.toContain. So maybe we can create a method for this as well. So let's do that. So maybe let's here, I can create a new method and then new method can be called verify URL contains. Verify URL contains, and this will take in some kind of text. And then I can add in my session here. So I'm going to say expect this dot page dot URL dot to contain, and it should contain the text. So this is kind of another helper method I've added in. Now I can even use this over here. So this whole thing can get changed to await this dot verify URL contains. 
And then I can add in my search text right here, this whole thing. Perfect. And I can remove this. There you go. So it's pretty nice, right? We were able to get rid of that. Now I can just use this dot verify URL contains over here as well. I can do await homepage dot verify URL contains and then the text is cricket. So that's nice. And then finally, we can add in the assertion for this as well. So here, I don't really need to go ahead and create, a, let's say, a new method for it. I can simply use it like this. Await expect homepage.logo to be visible. There you go. So as you can see, this whole thing is now converted to really easy readable context over here. So for someone who's not that familiar with coding, they will probably think what's happening over here versus with this one, they're gonna know, all right, I'm going to the homepage, I'm verifying that the URL contains this, and then I'm expecting that the logo should be visible, which is pretty nice. And we don't really have to hard code any of the links or locator or so on. So let's get rid of all of this. One thing we haven't done in our homepage is basically making all of this read only. This is kind of a uh, standard so that no one can go ahead and update this. So we'll change all of this to read only. And I will change these ones as well. There you go. So that's nice. Now, finally, we're going to go ahead and update these ones as well. So, same as my homepage, I'm going to create this, add my homepage over here as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing homepage.goto to because we're going to the same URL. And then I'm going to, the best part is going to be that we replaced all of this with a nice helper method, which is perform search. So I can do homepage dot perform search. And then the search we're performing is using the text India. Now this is dynamic, right? We can change it as we need. And then we are verifying the search results. So I'm saying await homepage dot verify search results. And then I'm going to add in the same text, which is India right there. Beautiful. So this whole thing now has been converted to this nice four lines and it's a lot more readable as you can see homepage.go to perform search, verify search results and it should be India. Let's try to run this to make sure this actually works. So we're running the first test. There you go. It's successfully passed as you can see right here. And now let's run the second one as well. So this test actually failed because it's trying to get this, make this dynamic, right? Because we're getting results for India. Instead, it's getting 15 to 1, 5 results for India. So for this, what we can actually do is use regex once again to make sure this is dynamic. So let's make that change. So over here, I'm going to go at the end and use a regex for this one so that we are dynamically checking for this particular content and only making sure that this contains whatever the term we are looking for. So I can do new regex and add my regex right here and let's remove this there you go so this way i'm simply saying it should make sure that this text is actually there inside the entire text that i'm getting back so kind of keeping it text contains instead of doing just text so let's run this to make sure whether this works this time and there you go this time my test successfully passed so previously we were getting error because you we were getting 15,000 uh, search results for India. Instead of that, we simply said, don't, I don't really care about what's there. As long as results for whatever term I'm searching for is there, then it should work. So in future, if you need to update it to any other country, let's say Australia, this should still work. There you go. My test still worked successfully. Perfect. So that's it, guys. This is how you can implement PageObject model. And I would want you guys to go ahead and do the same thing for all of the other tests as well. And as you can see right here, we did it by simply creating a new class and we added all of our page and locators. We initialized them in our constructor. And then we added necessary methods that were kind of help us to reduce the duplicate code. And this makes it really nice and readable. And as you can see right here, my text is, or my overall test is quite readable. Anyone can look into it and know what we're trying to do here. And as you can see, we are simply able to change the uh, countries and we were able to perform that search, verify the search results really easily. So that's kind of the advantage you get with using PageObject model. You kind of create a high level abstraction where you put all of your elements and locators and so on. Now in future, if I'm using this somewhere else as well, I simply have to update this place. And if this locator gets updated, for example, I can simply go ahead and make this change to let's say 
it's just search filters and anyways in future i can update it to just this and it will get updated for all of my tests that's one of the main advantage you get by using ptopchick model all right so that's it for this video go ahead and try this out for all the other tests and then we're going to move on to our next scenario